give us a better idea of how to deal with enthalpy and enthalpy changes, let's do an example here. So here we're going to look at combustion of methane, just like we did in the previous video, but now we're going to analyze where that change in enthalpy comes from. So we start off with some methane gas, we add some oxygen gas, we get the reaction going, and all of a sudden lots of energy gets produced, we end up with carbon dioxide gas and water, liquid water, serves it becomes liquid vapor, but then of course when it cools down to 25 degrees centigrade, it becomes liquid water. Now, notice we have a list here of what we call the standard molar enthalpy of formation for four molecules here. We have the methane molecule, water molecule, carbon dioxide molecule, and oxygen gas molecule because in the natural state, oxygen forms diatomic molecules. So what is the enthalpy of formation? The amount of energy being freed or sometimes needing, it needs to be added to in some cases, but since all these numbers are negative, this is the amount of energy that's given off when methane is formed from carbon and four hydrogen atoms. So if you take a carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms and put them together to form methane, you, you will release 74.81 kilojoules per mole of material. So the negative means it's given off, it's therefore exothermic. So naturally, carbon hydrogen, when you bring them together to methane, that's a more stable, lower energy state than you have carbon hydrogen by itself. Same with water. You take two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, you put it together, and they form water that is a lower energy state. You'll, have, you'll give off 285.8 kilojoules per mole of water. Same with carbon dioxide. You take one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms and you put those together, you will lose or give off energy to the extent of 393.5 kilojoules, and remember kilo is thousands, so that's 393,500 joules of energy per mole when carbon dioxide gas is formed from the individual of carbon and oxygen atoms. And interestingly enough, oxygen gas in the diatomic state, zero kilojoules form because that is its most natural lowest energy state and if you take oxygen and pull it apart you need to add energy to it not energy away from it so oxygen gas in the diatomic state is in its most natural state will it normally will occur and so therefore the enthalpy of formation for that is simply zero all right now let's look at the reaction so methane plus oxygen gives us carbon dioxide and water. Notice we have one mole of methane, two moles of oxygen gas, one mole of carbon dioxide, and two moles of hydrogen, I, mean, I should say of water, um, liquid water, two moles of liquid water. And so to calculate the change in enthalpy, we add up the enthalpy as other products and subtract from them the enthalpies of all the reactants. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is equal to the enthalpy of the product. So what products do we have? Well, they're right here, carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide, the enthalpy of formation is minus 393.5 kilojoules. So my hundreds, minus 393.5 kilojoules per mole. So let's take a look here. We have carbon dioxide, which is right here. And there's the other reactant, which is water. Notice we have two molecules. So it's two times the enthalpy of formation for water, H2O right here. That's minus 285.8, so minus 285.8 kilojoules per mole. But since we have two moles, two moles, and here we have one mole, maybe it's better if I just write one mole, then the units come out a little better for illustration. So this is equal to one mole multiplied times this per mole, and this is two moles multiply times this per mole, and don't forget that this is the minus, okay? Now from that we subtract the enthalpies of the reactants. The reactants are right here, methane and oxygen. We have one mole of methane, so it would be one mole, times the enthalpy of formation for methane, which is right here, minus 74.8, so it would be a minus 74.8 kilojoules per mole, and then plus two moles because we have two moles of water that two moles times zero kilojoules per mole because the enthalpy of oxygen or the enthalpy of formation of oxygen is zero and there we go there's our equation now notice that the moles cancel out the moles cancel out the moles cancel out and the oh this is two moles the moles cancel out so we end up with just kilojoules also notice that this is negative and this is negative, and here we subtract 
a negative number. So minus times a minus, this part becomes a plus. So in the end, this is equal to minus 393.5 kilojoules minus two times, because this minus, I'll put it over here, 285.8 kilojoules. And then a minus times a minus becomes plus 74.8 kilojoules. There we go. So recognize this. And there's only one of those, right? So we only have one methane. We have two oxygens. So plus zero. I'll just go plus zero kilojoules so that we didn't forget about that. So notice this is the enthalpy of the product minus the enthalpy of the reactants. And now we need a calculator. So 393.5, it's minus, and then minus 2 times 285.8, and then we add to that plus 74.8 equals, and we get minus 890.3 kilojoules. That would be the total enthalpy change for this reaction if we had one mole of methane, two moles of oxygen, one mole of carbon dioxide, and two moles of water. Notice we're off by one, dec one number in the first decimal place compared to the previous video, but that's probably just because of Randolph errors, and we're not going to worry about that. It's normally about 890.4, but like I said, Randolph error, we can live with that. So hopefully that helps bring this to clarity that when you try to calculate the enthalpy change in a reaction, you add up all the enthalpy of the products that you end up with. So you end up, add up all the enthalpies here and subtract from that all the enthalpies of the reactants. And that gives you the number. That means the enthalpy change or the energy change. If it's negative, that means this, this amount of energy was given off. So therefore, in this case, it's an exothermic reaction.